In this video, I'll show you how to do hypothesis testing using Excel for our chapter 10, which covers hypothesis testing of two populations. So on the first tab, you'll notice here, this looks a lot like the same tab that we had in chapter 9, because it is. How to find critical values of Z or T, as well as how to find P values of Z or T values is the same in both chapter 9 and chapter 10. So I'm providing the same spreadsheet as before. And then we'll also look at the two examples from our lecture, example 1019 and 1043. The most important thing is you want to make sure that you have your data analysis tool pack set up. So to check if you have it, click on data and go to the right. You need to have this data analysis tool pack appearing. And if I click on that, you can see all of our different data analysis tools available here that we need. And as we scroll down, the ones that we're working with for chapter 10 are down here in the bottom. Now, if you haven't added the data analysis tool pack, I have instructions in Canvas on how to do it, whether you have a Mac or a PC. Please click on that and follow the instructions to add data analysis tool pack. So here we have problem 19. Note that when you do your homework, your numbers will look different, but the process is the same. Uh, here are the instructions on the left side. So you can use this while you're doing your homework. We'll click data and find our data analysis button towards the right you have to add this in to your Excel. Otherwise, you won't be able to find this. So we click on the Data Analysis button. And recall that our analysis tools are in alphabetical order. So I'm going to move down to the end. And in our story, we first need to determine whether our variances are equal or unequal so that we use the correct t-test. In problem 19, our samples have equal variances. So we will choose the two sample assuming equal variances and click OK. Next, we are going to select the data ranges for each variable. So clicking on the button here, we'll select the sample from population one and you can either hit enter or click on the button to get back into the menu and select our second variable, our sample from population two. Click on that. To get Double check that the cells here include all of the cells that you want in your problem. Because if you accidentally miss a row or have too many rows, this can affect your data. And note that the problem I'm showing you here is not going to be exactly the same as the problem you have on your homework. So be careful. Now our hypothesized mean difference is going to be zero. And then check the labels button. Note that when I selected my variable ranges, I included the label because that way when the table appears, it has a nice label for my data and I don't have to uh, try to remember which one's which. Now in our story, the alpha was 0.05 and Excel sometimes defaults to 0.05 or whatever your last alpha you typed in. So again, make sure you have the correct alpha stated. And then for my output range, um, you can do a new worksheet or I'm going to just put it on the same page. So I'll click on this button and just put it right there. Click any cell away from my data. And then I'll hit OK. And I'm going to open this up a little bit. So we can see here, there's my test statistic. And because this is a two-tailed test, I'm going to be working with two-tailed data information right here. So here I've got problem 43 set up here in Excel. And again, when you do your homework in my stat lab, you'll have slightly different numbers. So you want to make sure to use the Excel file for your homework that'll be different than this Excel file for practice. So here again are the instructions to conduct our t-test. And you can also find these on your worksheet. So I'm going to go to data and click on my data analysis. And again, I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to look for the t-test of paired two sample for means and click OK. When the menu appears, there might be some information already in it if your Excel remembers what you did last. So make sure to clear it out so you don't accidentally select the wrong information and we'll start fresh. So our next step is to select the data ranges. So for variable one, that'll be my ergonomic keyboards. And I like to always select the label so that when I get my table, it's labeled correctly. I won't accidentally mix up my information. My second variable, which is the standard keyboard, and our hypothesized mean difference. We're hypothesizing that it's zero difference. I'll check my labels button because I did highlight ergonomic and standard. 
my alpha in the problem was uh, 0 0.01. Now, if you hit OK, uh, the table will appear on a new tab, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on the same page so that we can see our information. I'll put it right here. And then I'm going to hit OK. And here is the results of our data. In this case, we are working with an upper tail test. That means it's only one tail. So I'm going to be looking at our T test statistic here. And I'm also going to look at our data here for one tail. Here's my p-value, and here's my critical t-value. So you're going to use these numbers to make your decision. So if you have any questions, just let me know.